This is how you know we're in a simulation. Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Atsumi Hangos. In this video, I'll be teaching you how I took my Sony Hi8 film and transferred it onto my laptop. This was a request by one of my subscribers, Xavier. So I'm gonna try to not make a fool of myself because this tutorial is gonna require quite a bit of cables. So when I was researching it, there were like three options that were very prominent as I looked through the forums. One of them was like an Elgato cable. The other one was this like other RGB thing. But what I personally landed on was the AV out cable with this Firewire cable and Firewire to USB-C. Uh, all the stuff that I talked about will be down below. They are affiliate links. What you wanna do is get the AV out cable. As you put the male into the female uh, and you're slowly losing your dignity because this <laughs> I just said that on the internet, you're gonna connect the fire wire to the USB-C. And pretty important, make sure that you have a full battery on the camera. This will just save you a headache later down the line. Uh, then you're gonna plug the AV out into the camera. There's typically two modes on these Sony Handycams you're gonna go into play slash edit. Also pretty important and something that I wish someone told me was rewind it all the way to the end. You'll just hear a click from the stop. From there, you want to plug in the USB-C dongle into the laptop. Then we're gonna use QuickTime Player. From QuickTime Player, you're going to have a drop down option that will let you choose your source depending on the way that it's named, as you can see mine has like a very specific name, you will choose that source. And the reason it's important to start from the beginning of your film is because if you decide to rewind it as you're recording, also make sure you're capturing both audio and video. Um, because for me, when I was using the other methods, it was only capturing the audio and not the video. Unfortunately, there's no way to speed this up. If you have 50 minutes of film runtime, you just have to wait on the computer for 50 minutes, go do something else, and then wait for quick time to record that. And that's why it's important to have a full battery. Now that you have your film on the laptop, you can do whatever you want with it, right? For me, I don't remember if I really color corrected anything or Maybe I bumped up the exposure here and there, but you want to use the camera because it produces a certain look, right? So for me personally, I just went into like Premiere Pro and the way that I personally think it looks a little bit more presentable is just putting borders on the film itself. You know, play around with it, make it look nice, make it look cool. And that's really all that it is. It's a very simple process. Again, sorry, this is only for Mac users. Pretty sure you can download QuickTime for Windows too though, right? Go ahead play around with it. The process isn't very difficult or tedious. Just the dongles. The dongles are so... This is how you know we're in a simulation. Yeah, that's a, that's a quick and simple tutorial. If you did use my method, tweet at me as always if Twitter hasn't gone down the drain. But as always, my name is Asmi Hangos. I thank you so much for your time and your attention. And I'll catch you in the next one.